Right. So now let's look at what this um, implies for our um, balance law, okay? the final piece. Okay, let's start out with the, the form of the balance of linear momentum in the current configuration, okay, which is rho. Um, partial of uh, V with respect to time plus gradient of V V equals uh, divergence of sigma plus this. Okay? All right? Okay. Now, um, let's look first of all at this term. Okay? Let's look at gradient of V, spatial gradient of V times V, okay? Now, what you observe here is that um, even though this term is of um, the following form, right? We know that we can write the gradient, the, the spatial gradient of V as being the, uh, remember how we, how, how we wrote it originally, right? We wrote it as that. F inverse, okay? And this is our spatial gradient of V. Means V. Okay? Now, straight away, we know that um, this term that I've drawn an under brace on is of uh, second order, right? So what we're seeing is that uh, it, it has a second order term because we know that this thing is properly partial of V with respect to X times the inverse of 1 plus partial of U with respect to X, right? All of this V, okay? Now, we can approximate this as Again, doing a Taylor series expansion of the inverse, okay? We get terms of the form, the first order term of that inverse is indeed of this form, okay? Plus higher order terms, okay? What I've done is apply the Taylor series expansion to the, to the formula for the inverse, okay? All of this times uh, V, all of this acting on V, all right? Once again, invoking our requirement that we know that this term here is essentially F dot, right? Which is now partial of U, partial of U dot with respect to X, right? So we are seeing now that in, in order to maintain only the first order terms, we should have just partial of V with respect to X, okay, times or acting on V, okay, right? Now, this term is indeed first order in uh, the displacement gradient, okay, because um, this also is just partial of U dot with respect to X, okay? However, this term is not linear in the velocities anymore, okay? So we get a term that is a quadratic
okay? All right. So here we have an instance of where the dynamic side of the balance of linear momentum introduces a nonlinearity in the problem. Okay? All right, and this is this is another aspect that we had not remarked upon previously. Okay? Again, in order to have an overall theory that, that is linear and in order to have differential equations that are also linear in, in, in the primary variable, okay, this term is dropped. Okay? So what is done is we neglect partial V with respect to X times V, okay? to have linear PDEs, okay? So where, where we are left then is rho partial of V with respect to T equals divergence sigma plus BF. Okay? Now, let's rewrite this bringing in uh, F. Okay? We know that rho, the mass density in the current configuration, is rho zero divided by determinant of F. Okay? We know that the divergence of sigma which we write as, uh, as um, okay, let me write it as this, this sort of operator, okay? Let me write it as partial of uh, x, f inverse, okay? That gives me the spatial gradient operator, right? Dotted with sigma, okay, in operator form. For BF, we have the body force in the reference configuration, right, divided by determinant of F, okay? Once again, invoking our linearization of determinant F, we see that, so using once again 1 over determinant F, is approximately 1 minus trace F, okay, where I first of all expanded the determinant and uh, rewritten it, uh, rewritten the reciprocal of 1 plus X as approximately 1 minus X, okay, so I've, I've, I've got, got a Taylor series expansion here also and truncated it to first order terms, okay, so using all of this, what we see is that we get 1 minus trace F rho zero partial of V with respect to time equals. Now, same business here. We write F inverse as, uh, sorry, these are all approximations. Uh, so is this. So is this, sorry. Right, so we can now write this approximation as uh, partial with respect to x. Now for, for f inverse, I'm going to write it as one minus partial of u with respect to x, okay? Taylor series expansion of the inverse. Okay, truncated to first order terms only. Okay, this operator acting on sigma. Okay, plus 1 minus trace f, again reduced to, restricted to first order terms only, bf. Okay, 
Once again, when we stare at this, we see that, well, if we were to maintain this term, then it's acting on the velocity, uh, on, on, on the time derivative of the velocity, would again introduce nonlinearities because f all, because trace of f also involves a displacement u, which is involved in, in, in v, okay? So this term would be nonlinear again. Okay, give us a nonlinear PDE, right? Um, same business here. Okay, um, and, uh, and 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 as far as this is concerned, right? While we would we would have a term that is, um, we we would have a term that where where we, we would have an effect where the body force also depends upon the displacement gradient upon the strains. Okay, so so well this this term is again nonlinear in the displacement gradient because we know that sigma is linear, okay? This term is linear in the displacement gradient, okay? So what is, what is done is that the, that the nonlinear effects are definitely thrown out, okay, to maintain the linear PDE, okay? Now, it is common to drop this uh, dependence of the body force upon the displacement gradient simply because the body force is often thought of as something that's externally imposed, okay? If we maintain this dependence, right, if we maintain this, that term, right, that, that product of, of trace F and B and, and the body force, we end up having a body force which, uh, which also, uh, which actually depends upon the solution, okay? And just for simplicity, that is, that is often dropped when, when linearized elasticity is, uh, is, is being computed, okay? So, dropping terms that would make the partial differential equation nonlinear Okay, and those were the first two term, the, the, the term on the left hand side and the first term on the right hand side involving divergence of sigma. So dropping those nonlinear terms um, right and keeping right keeping the body force constant meaning independent, Okay, all right? You want to keep the body force independent of the field that you're trying to solve for, okay? That, that's a simplification, that's not needed. That, that, does not, that is not needed uh, to keep the equations linear, okay? Even if you had them, they would still be linear, but that's just a complication that, pre that is, is preferred to be, that it is preferred to avoid, okay? So with all of this, what one is left with then is this, rho naught, uh, partial of V, with respect to time equals, um, now, uh, this divergence or that operator acting on sigma through the dot product plus BF, okay? Which, recognizing that this now is just second derivative of U with respect to T, okay? gives us rho zero reference divergence of sigma plus BF, okay? And you, re and you recall that sigma is, is essentially the same as any of the other stresses. For linearized elasticity, neglecting residual stresses, okay? So this is how the, ba the, the balance of linear momentum also is reduced, mainly by uh, keeping things linear, in this case by keeping the PDE linear, right? Otherwise we go to nonlinear PDEs. Strictly speaking, some of those other forms which would arise are called quasi-linear, but they are definitely not linear PDEs, 
Um, and there is this other simplification that it is desired to keep the body force independent of the solution. Okay? So this is what, what things reduce to. Right? And now, of course, uh, because uh, uh, you know, all these quantities, especially if you look at the stress as being uh, equal to, uh, approximately equal to P or S, what you see is that uh, it really doesn't matter whether this thing is, uh, you know, though we started out with the PDE defined in omega T, right? It is uh, defined in omega T or which is basically equivalent to omega naught, okay? Because we don't, we have no uh, real, we, we, we no longer here have any um, mention of, uh, you know, spatial objects, right? We don't, we no longer need to work with the current position because we are working with capital X. We could, equi we could work with these stress tensors, right? We are working with this, which is defined on the, on the reference configuration, right? And we are working with this, right? So, every, so, so really the difference between the current and the reference, con reference configurations is lost here. All right, so that is how our equations of linearized elasticity are obtained rigorously, okay? So we'll stop the segment here.